Good morning, everyone. It is uh, Thursday, and it's time for another episode of Learn with Jason. So today, I have uh, Andre Pelesny, I hope I didn't just murder the pronunciation of your name, um, here to teach us about <laughs> Kentico Cloud. How, how bad was that? Uh, hey, Jason, uh, not, not that bad. I, I've, uh, I've heard worse, so <laughs> you got right, quite well. <laughs> can, can you say it for me so that I, I know how bad it was? Uh, Pelesny. That's that's the English version. I mean, um, there are some some special characters in its original version, but uh, as for an English version, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> I always feel bad doing like the English pronunciation of somebody's name. I'm like, well, it's your name. There really shouldn't be an English pronunciation of that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, okay. So today on the show, we're going to talk about Kentico Cloud, and I think our goal that we we briefly discussed is to. Um, use Kentico Cloud to build out a Gatsby site. And ideally, we're going to turn this Gatsby site into a Gatsby theme by the end of it, right? Yes, that would be that'll be nice. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So uh, with that being said, I have never used Kentico Cloud. This is actually, I think, the first time that I visited the homepage. So I'm going to start signing up for an account. And while I do that, do you want to talk a little bit about kind of who you are and also about what Kentico Cloud is? Sure, sure. Um, so uh, who am I? Uh, my name is Andre. Uh, I used to work as a developer uh, for a partner agency of Kentico. Uh, then I switched jobs uh, and started working for Kentico. Uh, it was four, uh, more than four years ago uh, when the main product that we had was a full uh, all-in-one uh, monolithic solution uh, based on .NET uh, called Kentico. Uh, and Kentico Cloud was uh, pretty much a, a startup project internally in the company. Uh, but over the years, uh, we found out that uh, uh, there is actually a demand for uh, a headless CMS. Uh, and uh, we wanted to um, bring up a solution that would be based on an API and that would be completely uh, completely free of all the restrictions that the, that the normal uh, .NET CMS had. Um, so that's uh, when we came up with, with uh, the headless CMS, uh, we put it to market. Uh, and it's basically a place where, or content hub, where you can, where you can store any type of content, uh, a place where you can integrate other systems into. And uh, the, the biggest, uh, uh, biggest theme or biggest focus of the tool is uh, to work with content. So the management of content, collaboration, uh, workflow processes, uh, and so on. Uh, but from the point of view of developers, uh, the main thing uh, is uh, the REST API. Uh, so it gives you complete freedom over the content. Um, and the many SDKs uh, for many languages like PHP, uh, Java, um, obviously JavaScript, um, and others. Uh, and of course, you also have a, a source plugin for Gatsby. So that, uh, that makes these two, uh, these two tools a very good friends. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so I have uh, I've just finished setting up my my trial account, and I now have no idea what to do next. So, how <laughs> how do we get started here? So so there are uh, this I I really like this process because it's always the same with new websites. Mm -hmm. uh, so the you need to you need to decide is what you want to build uh, because okay. Kentucky Cloud is obviously a content hub that you can use with websites, you can use it with mobile apps, uh, you can build an app for for your Apple Watch, uh, whatever you want. So it depends what you want to build. Uh, today, I uh, I think we will build a website, yeah, based on based on Gatsby. Okay. So uh, the content um, is actually something you need to think about uh, how you want to structure it, how you want to insert it into the system, and how you want to consume it then on your website. Okay. And now I know that if, um, Gatsby samples are based on Markdown. So uh, maybe if you're starting with an implementation, it's best to start with uh, the website as you currently have it. So if it's a blog, then get a uh, get a starter for blog. Um, if it's an e-commerce site, get a, a template for an e-commerce site. Yeah? Uh, and based on the content that you want to have on the site, um, all the things that you need to do inside Kentico Cloud or inside the headless CMS uh, will kind of come from that. Yeah. So if you, uh, I think you already had it there, the Gatsby starter. If you, can we look at that for, for a brief moment, maybe? Sure. On the demo? On the demo. Yes. So uh, when you open a website, um, in terms of content, there are two types of content. Um, at least that's the way how, how I uh, like to see it. Um, and that's the static content, and that's the dynamic content. Uh, of course, in case of Gatsby, it's all static. Yeah? <laughs> uh, 
but uh, the thing is that the dynamic content is the content that changes or is dynamic in terms of uh, where you store it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, here in the blog, you can see that the, the Gatsby blog started the headline and um, the author, if it's a personal blog, the author is pretty much static. Yeah. Uh, right. You're not going to change very often. Uh, but in terms of the content that is changing, that's the blog, uh, blog posts, blog articles, um, those are already representing one of your content types. So the content always have uh, templates. Uh, it's something like a wireframe for content. Um, and it's consisting of fields. That's a field for title, for date time, for content, um, and everything else that, uh, that forms one blog post. Okay. Uh, and that's the thing that you need to create uh, in Candigo Cloud. And that's the thing that you will consume by the API. And so yeah. it looks like we've so, got the the title, the date, and just the content in this one. Um, yes. So we can we can do a pretty yes. simple blog template. It, it looks start, yeah. Uh, but apart from from the date, time, and title and content, you also have a URL slug. Right. Uh, oh, right. We might we might find out that there are also some other things that we will need to do insert, like a description for uh, for SEO um, and other things. Yeah. Okay. Um, we can we can definitely start with with the basics. Yeah. So if you go back to Canico Cloud, okay, I will actually guide you through the process. On the left side, um, there are four items in the in the menu. One of them, yeah, uh, is content types. That's the third one from the top. Yeah. That this one. this one, this one. one. One up. Content yes. models. Got it. Okay. Um, content models. Yeah. And here we can create content types. Okay. Uh, so you can. Oh, you're actually in the getting started project. So we might as well create a, a blank project um, to, to, to start really on, on, a, on a green field. So if you click on my projects, yeah, I'll create a new project here uh, on the top la top right. Oh, wait. Or there. The, this yeah, one that's, or that's okay. this one? I, uh, I'll, do, I'll do what you say. They have, um, the same, they have the same meaning. We're going to call this, we'll call it Gatsby blog. And yeah. I'm assuming that's just... This is fine. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's all fine. You can just create. go ahead and create it. And we're doing an empty project, okay? Yeah. Actually, um, in um, in paid plans, you can also uh, you can also pick your data center um, because there are multiple uh, throughout the world. But we're on the US, so we're fine. Okay. Uh, um, so now you're in the Gatsby block, so we can go back to content types. Okay, here and here. Okay. Yeah, and, and create new. And there's a, a quick question that came in in the chat, which is why why does Keneco Cloud look so different from Keneco, and and what's the mm -hmm. difference? And and that's actually a great question because I also don't know what the difference is. Yeah, the difference is that uh, Keneco uh, EMS, uh, the the all-in-one solution, is based on .NET, and it's a um, it's a big monolithic system that you can install on premise or in the cloud. Um, and you can um, uh, you can host any kind of site uh, on, on that uh, CMS. Um, Kenico Cloud is a headless CMS, so it's a completely different product. The, the, those two, they, they have very much nothing in common. Okay. Uh, they don't share any code base. Uh, they do have connectors to each other, but uh, that's that's as far as it goes. Yeah? Kenico, Kenico Cloud has connectors also to many other uh, systems. So they are completely different systems for completely uh, I would say I wouldn't say different purpose because um, the the usual outcome is a website, but uh, uh, there are different systems, different development teams, uh, different products, different pricing, different licensing, uh, different hosting. Yeah, because uh, Kenico Cloud is a content as a service, while Kenico EMS is a system that you need to install and you need to host it somewhere. Okay. Okay. Um, well, cool. So I am now looking at these, and let's see. I'm just kind of. Yeah, feeling my way through it, but it looks like I can I can just drag things over, and I've set put together a title, a slug, and content, and then I'm also going to put in the yeah. uh, date. Is that right? Yes, yes, that's correct. Uh, just one thing for the slug. Uh, there is also an, a content element URL slug, um, but you have a, you have a very small screen, so maybe you missed it. If you oh, scroll down. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah, let me. Slug, yeah. All right. Let me the do... good thing is that if you use if you use that one, um, it will actually generate the slug based on uh, any text field. So um, here you can you can define, yeah. Here you oh, can define the source. Cool. Okay. Yeah. So let me delete this one. All right. So now I have the date, the title, the slug, and the content. And do we need any other settings here? I realize this is kind of tiny, but I I'm. Uh, uh, Trying to make it legible I think, for people. I think we're fine for I, I think we're fine for now. You can save um, save changes on the top right. 
Okay. And I uh, think we can go back to content. Uh, so that's the first item in the menu. Okay. We can start creating some items. I'm going to create a new blog. And yeah. for ease, I'm going to actually just copy these posts. Yeah. And we'll just, we'll label it so we can see that it's happened. Um, this post mm -hmm. is going to be, uh oh, hello? There we go. Uh, it'll be posted today. The, wait, what did I do? Oh. There, there are two things. So, so the, the first thing that you, uh, you called New Beginnings Candico, um, there's just a content item name, while the title is something that will be displayed on the site. Yeah. So there are sometimes there are uh, requirements to have these two separated. Yeah? Mm, okay. Uh, there, there could be some metadata usually in the content item, uh, the content item texts. Okay. Um, and so I've just copy pasted. I am going to make the assumption that that is okay. It looks like it came out all right. Mm -hmm. um, uh, one thing to note here, maybe, uh, okay. that if you, if you want to keep using uh, things like markdown editors or you want a full WYSIWYG editor, uh, it's possible to integrate that um, in here. We already have a markdown editor uh, that is integrated. Uh, okay. But in terms of uh, the full potential of what Candigro Cloud gives you, it's much better to use the rich text editor because because the SDKs also give you resolutions of um, links uh, between items. It gives you a resolution of uh, uh, of uh, uh, inline components um, and other things. So it's better to use the rich text editor. Yeah, but if you wanted to use Markdown, it's also possible. Cool. So, oh, so yeah, I can just like I can just say I want to link between yeah. these posts, and it would it would do that. That's that's slick. <clears throat> that's something that I, I do kind of miss is uh, being able to, to edit a post or like move it and have all of the rest of the content know where it moved to. Um, so this is, that's a, that's a handy feature. Um, okay. So we've got one post. Let me publish that one. Uh, I love posts. Those are two parts. Um, so then on the second one, you write in the previous article. So um, here you can just uh, link those two. Yeah. Okay, yeah, let's, and you know what, let's go ahead and do that with this next one. So let me, let me create a new okay. post. Um, how do I create a new post? Can I just I'll go here? Um, click on, new. click on content. Yeah. All right. I'm going to create a new blog post and I will grab this one. And we can do this and this. We'll post this one uh, yesterday. Why not? We'll travel mm -hmm. back in time for this post. <laughs> um, we can do this and drop this in here. And we'll say in my first post. And then we can just link like this. Um, whoops. Let's grab just the first post. And we'll say content item. And I'm going to link to this yep. one. And now that'll just stay up to date. Yes. Slick. All right. So let's publish this. Okay. All right. Um, so we, we've got like, we're, we're in pretty good shape here. Do we need to do anything else? Uh, not, not really. No, uh, this is, this is all we need to do for now in terms of content. Um, so now we can, uh, we can go to the code. Um, the good thing might be also to uh, know how to get the data from Candigo cloud just for testing purposes. Yeah. Um, so if you can, a new tab in the browser and just type in uh, deliver.candicocloud.com and slash. Yeah, uh, you need to put a project ID here as well. And if you go back to Candico Cloud, um, in the URL, there is uh, the project ID, and or you can find it on this the one. Settings. Yeah. Um, it's here, or it's in the settings. Yeah, yeah. And if you if go I... to the open API keys, uh, you will find the, the project ID. Uh, there. Project ID. Okay, so if I grab that, drop this in here. And slash uh, items, I think is the right URL. Yeah. So these are your, your posts in the REST API or in JSON, basically. Cool. Um, oh, so this is interesting. So it, it doesn't resolve that for me? Or is it? Oh, uh, no. Um, this, is, this is the raw output of the CMS. So it gives you the data item ID. 
um, it actually expects you to handle uh, the rest on your own. Um, when you have the when you have the ID, uh, you can look for the item uh, in Canico Cloud in the API again. Um, but if you use uh, the Canico, uh, Canico Cloud SDK, um, mm -hmm. that uh, there you will be looking to provide a resolver and it will do everything for you. Okay. Yeah, so we will cool. we will get. Um, okay. But right here, we don't really have uh, ref because we don't know that the URL slug is the thing that you want to use, right? Gotcha. Okay, cool. Um, well, this, yeah, so this looks cool. Uh, and next, we need to set up a blog, right? Yeah. All right, so let me do, let's see, we're in. That's empty now, so I'm going to run Gatsby new and just, oh, wait, I need to do, I want to build it in this folder, not a new folder. So I'm going to build a new blog starting in this folder. And fingers crossed, everything's going to go the way we want it to. Let's find out. Well, as long as GitHub is uh, is up and running. <laughs> yeah, I, I've been having uh, node issues lately where like I have to change my node version to to get Sharp to build. But I guess we'll, mm -hmm. we, I, I've learned how to work around it. So if it does blow up, I'm pretty sure I can fix it. Let's find out. Okay. <laughs> Oh, come on. This is the most stressful part of installing a Gatsby project <laughs> is watching this build. Come on. Oh God. <laughs> okay, hey, we, we got it, all right, we're good. Okay, so now I can open up over here and um, just to, to take a quick look, we have, let's see what's in here. We've got um, Gatsby image, so an RSS feed, Google Analytics, uh, stuff for progressive web apps, so a manifest and offline, um, React helmet so we can control the head element, sharp for images, mm -hmm. typography for, for the text and, and kind of like typography setup, uh, and then a bunch of remark plugins to support the blog file system, which is used right now to pull in the, the markdown. So we should be able to get rid of pretty much all of this once we get, um, once we get the, the Kentico stuff set up, mm -hmm. then we also yeah, have probably, yeah. more sharp stuff, uh, syntax highlighting and more typography things. So, all right, so we've got that. And then over in our, um, components we've got some pretty straightforward stuff we've got the typography setup we've got our blog post component that is used to actually build the posts mm -hmm. themselves the index which is where we show previews uh, 404 page we have our seo component which pulls in site metadata and sets that up in contentful um, then we have our layout component and this bio component that shows the information about who wrote the thing. Um, I like that we we allow you to add the author, but the author, no matter what, lives in San Francisco. <laughs> um, oh yeah, that's nice. <laughs> okay, so all right, we we've so we've got our bearings. We kind of know what's going on in here. Um, what should we do first? I imagine what, get can I go data. Yeah, the first thing we need to do is um, is install the source uh, plugin. Okay. And so let's look that up. It's going then to be Gatsby source Kentico Cloud. Kentico Cloud. With with a dash in the middle. With a dash. Here it is. Yeah. All right. So this. Let me just copy that, and we'll do one of these. And well, this is the first thing we will probably also need uh, the Kentico Cloud uh, SDK delivery uh, for delivery um, because of the type resolvers. Uh, it, it, it does use that in the back uh, in the background anyway. Um, okay. But we will probably need to have that uh, dependency there as well. Okay. Does it tell us that anywhere? Uh, I don't think it tells you that here uh, because for some. Uh, for not for all scenarios, you need to do that. Okay. Uh, but let's let's for for later. I think that we can we can live uh, without it for now. You want to do it this later? Is... Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah. 
All right, so then the next thing that we need to do is we're going to put this into our plugins Yes. in Gatsby Cloud, or Gatsby Config, I mean. So yeah. I will add this one in. We're going to resolve the Gatsby source Kentico Cloud, and oh, in yeah. the options, we need delivery uh, client. You can just yeah. Yeah, um, okay, yeah, let's do that. We'll just grab this out. We will, we will need the type resolvers anyway, um, and the language code name uh, will be just default. Um, so, so if we if we take this, I can get rid of this and get rid of this. Uh, no, you need to no, you need to yeah, that's fine. But you need to provide at least one language code name. Um, in your case, I think it would be default because um, okay. it's the default for all projects. Uh, in case you had multiple languages, the code names are uh, are listed in uh, in the administration interface. Yeah, I get but you. Right so, now, uh, so if I don't supply this, though, it'll break. You, it, it doesn't default. Yeah, yeah. You have okay. to provide this. Okay. And do and I, I need to provide? Of, sorry. Uh, instead of uh, en us, I think you need to put there a default, like really default. Oh, I get you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. And do we need to remove? Okay. Type no, resolvers. just keep it. Keep it there. Type resolvers there. Uh, for now, we will need them later. Okay. Uh, but here you just need to provide the project ID again. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And that, it looks like, should be all we need. Let's take a look at the plugin again. Um, let me post this into yeah. the chat. Uh, nothing else. Run Gatsby Develop. Let's do it. Yes. All right. So we've got develop running, and it should be loading our Kentico Cloud stuff. And this is cool because it's showing us that it's working. So it's it's pulling out the Kentico Cloud. Yeah. Uh, we have everything is running, and we are in business. Let's make this a lot smaller. Um, let's use the Explorer. And I'm going to go ahead and just delete that for now. And we can look at. All Kenico Cloud type. Now, there type. are two things. Yeah. There are two things. Uh, first is uh, the Kenico Cloud type. Uh -huh. And the second one is Kenico Cloud item. Yeah. Uh, so it depends what you're looking for, but usually it's item. Now, those are the, the actual oh, component items. I got you. So, okay. So Kenico Cloud item. And then I'm going to get yes. nodes and I will get uh, elements. elements. Yes. And let's just and those get the are title the for now. Find, yeah. Do I. Which, which... We're looking for value mainly. Okay, value. So let's run that. Hey, there we go. We got uh, we got stuff coming in, and so I can also do the same thing for the. Or do I want resolved HTML here? Yeah, here you want to use the resolved HTML. Uh, that's because in the resolved HTML later we will have also the resolved links. Okay. Cool. All right, these are. I love this explorer. This is uh, something the yeah. <laughs> the team from from OneGraph put together, and it's just been making my life so much easier because now things just work, which is wonderful. Um, all right, cool. So yeah, and oh, I like that. You can even just set the those types of things. So oh yeah, I posted this two days ago as opposed to having to put a date in, which uh, which is great. Yeah. Um, all right, awesome. So now that we've got this, we can actually start to use it which I assume means we've got to dive into the, uh, probably the index page to start. Yes. Uh, so, so basically what the source plugin did is it created all the nodes. So now right. it's, uh, it's us to define the, the query to uh, get what we want. Okay. All right. So here's the query and we'll keep that, but we're going to end up replacing this. And I will just say, let's see, we need the excerpt slug. Do we get an, is there a way to generate an excerpt of the content? Uh, not, not directly, no. Uh, you have to do that uh, on your own. Okay. Uh, or you can create a resolver probably for this. Um, but uh, that's, okay. uh, I think that's, uh, I, I think I, uh, I created a description field for that. But yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's later there. Yeah, but I guess we can live without it for now. Okay, cool. Yeah, we can um, we can we can make that work. We'll just for now, I guess, just show uh, all of the content, and it'll just be like a 
a full a full list. Uh, let's see. So what else is here? We've got no variables. I need to get rid of that though, so that it's not breaking our query. And this should auto format for us, and then we'll have that data. And uh, you also might want to sort the blog posts. So okay. the sort that, that were that were. Uh, if you go back um, uh, to the original query in index, um, I think yeah, or you can do it this way. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's it's a little easier to do it this way. So we're just going to add a sort. Yeah. And we're sorting by. Let's see. Probably the elements and date field. Elements post date, date time, you think? Date time is fine, yeah. Okay. And we will order that. How do we, descending, I think, is what we want. Descending, yeah. Yep, okay, cool. So we've got that. Um, and then I can just copy this out. Oh, I have too many things open. Go away. All right. <laughs> And then I can just paste this in. And so it's just going to sort by this element's post date time. And yep. upon saving that, it'll auto format for us, make it a little more readable. And that should give us our posts. So the, um, the data is here. So I can then, let's, let's kind of do this uh, a step at a time, which is going to get weird for us. So we're mm -hmm. going to do data dot all. So it's all kind of cloud. Kentico cloud item blog. Item blog, yeah. Nodes. And then. Oh, I think it's edges as well. Well, I so I did the query a little bit differently. Um, instead of having to do oh, okay. edges and then node, we have a shortcut now that uh, they got introduced a little while back where you can just go straight to oh, nodes. Okay. Makes it a little bit easier than having to do the, the map to get into the node for each one. Um, cool, nice. Yeah, because this, this is kind of hard to read. So what we can do instead is we can just do post now. And that's a little easier. Uh, so we want our title to be uh, the, it's gonna be post.elements.title.value. Value, yes. Post.elements.title.value. And then we can get rid of I'm not even gonna do that. That's that's not something that we care about here. And then for this, it's going to be post.elements.slug.value, I think. Post slug dot value. Yeah. All right. Let me just hold on to that because I'm gonna need it. Let's do this one. Uh, post slug value, and we've already got the title. This one is going to be post dot elements dot post date dot. Uh oh, what date was this time. one? Oh, well, I think we date we time. queried it as value. I think, yeah, value. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, we sorted by by date time, and we queried for the value. Then we end up with uh, the post.elements.content.resolvedHTML. Post.elements.content.resolvedHTML. And that, I believe, should be the whole shebang. Let me do a quick search for node. Cool. All right, let's uh, let's give this a whirl and find out what happens. I'm going to have to stop and restart because we rewrote. What? I think I typoed. Posts. OK, let's try that again. And this will rerun that query so that we've got that figured out. Um, and while we're waiting for that to build, I'm going to take a look at the chat here. I asked where everybody was watching from, and this is exciting. We've got people from Puerto Rico, Canada, California, Australia. This is great. Um, I love, like, Twitch is so cool for this, where people just show up from, from all over the world. Okay, so we've got this. And hey, hey, look at that. 
I mean, it's Ooh. like we've clearly we've got issues that we would need to solve uh, for the excerpt. We'd probably want to add like a description field here, but um, mm -hmm. we are showing multiple posts. So we can. Oh, and Portland. Portland's in the house. Cool. All right. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Next, we need to update probably this one. So this one's making a query. And we'll also need to update the Gatsby node. Yeah, to create pages. Yeah. So this one, I think we can, we're almost using the same field. We're just going to be able to skip yeah. over some of the stuff. So let's get this query. And I can drop out this markdown remark query that we did because we're not using it anymore. And I can grab this one and come back in here. And I'm going to grab this content, but then we should only need, let's look. We're looking at the posts, and then we get the post. So we get the length, the node, and the slug, and that's it. So we're just gonna get the slug. <laughs> okay, so once I get this, then we can say all Kentico cloud item blog dot nodes. And then we can say if the post length is greater than one and we don't need to do this node thing anymore. And then here we can drop out the node there. And that is instead going to be um, elements. Elements. elements post slug value. And that also means that we don't need to create a slug anymore. So we can just drop that mm -hmm. whole piece. So we've got our slug, we've got our nodes, and in the blog post to prevent this from blowing up, what I'm gonna do is um, I'm going to, let's just, drop this for now. We'll, we'll just kind of skip this whole query for the moment. Um, and we'll rewrite it here in a second, but I want to make sure the pages are building mm -hmm. first. So I'm going to take all of this out. And instead, we'll just do a pre dump of the data. And that data comes out of Oh, it's this props.data, okay. Um, yeah, all right, let's just give this a shot. I'm gonna stop and restart it. Mm -hmm. And assuming I didn't typo anything, what we should see is that when we click on a post from the home page, we should see a JSON object with a dump of all of its content in, oh, I screwed something up. Site title is not defined. Ah. I leave the site metadata in place? I didn't. Just uh, hard code that right up. All right, um, then we get into here. We'll refresh the page and clicking through. Nope, that didn't work at all. So what went wrong? Let's take a look at the console. And we're missing well, we imported a bunch of stuff. Oh, I know what went wrong. We're we're trying to show the data, but I'm not exporting a query anymore, so that wouldn't work. Um, what I can export instead is page context, and that should show us our slug, which is what we wanted. New things, yeah. Okay, perfect. So then we can rewrite this query to actually use our data. And we can get that data by doing what? Where is our graphical? Um, so now, if we want to turn all of this off, we're going to get the actual item. And we're going to get it by its 
um, bytes element and split slug, yeah. And we want it to equal, and we'll set it to new beginnings. And then we want to get the elements, and let's start with just the title. OK, perfect. So this gives us what we need. We don't need the slug. We do need the date. Let's do one of these. Um, and then we want the resolved <laughs> HTML. Uh, do we need anything else? I don't think we do. OK. So I'm going to take this. Uh, maybe maybe, maybe we will need description. I think it's there for some SEO tag. Where's the description? Do we have description yet? We, we haven't set a description. We haven't set it up. OK. That's should we should we go back in and, and set this up because it looks like it's biting us in a couple places here. Uh yeah let's let's do that yeah. Okay so we're gonna go back in. We've now found a gap in our content type. So I'm going to my Gatsby blog. How do I get to the home page again? Um you need to click on the on the menu link uh, on the left. This one. So the oh. there the content uh, that was not the one. This one? <laughs> but the the content yeah got it okay um, and now and below that are content models yeah so there you can you can add the field okay all right and this one is going to be i just want regular oh, just text. a simple text yeah where is simple text this one oh the first one yeah okay and i'm gonna put that down here we'll call it description um so we know what it is and let's see, this is going to be required. And let's limit it to 70 words. That's too many words. Let's limit it to 50 words. So we'll change mm -hmm. that. We'll go back to our content. And then I'll go in here. And with this one, yeah, this is published. So you either need to unpublish it or create a new version. Oh, you can't just like, oh, interesting. So you can't like edit it and just, if I, if I create new version, is that going to edit the existing one when I publish it again? Uh, yes, uh, okay. because, uh, well, the thing how it works is that there might be a website <clears throat> that is uh, already working with the content that you are about to change. Yeah. So, uh, in order to not break it, uh, you can create a new version and when you're ready to publish that, um, it will actually exchange the, the old one, but you will get all the changes in the revision step. Yeah, so you will you will see the complete history. Uh, okay, I understand. All right, so I have published that one. Go back here, and let's create a new version. And we'll just pull this out. Okay. What? Oh. No, oh, too many words. <laughs> One more word over the limit. All righty. So we now have descriptions, and I'm going to stop and start the server so that we get those new content mm -hmm. definitions. Come on. Here we go. All right. Refresh, and now I should have description and value. Don't want to translate. And our description value is where? Did I not? What am I doing? Oh, did you stop cooperating? Hmm. Interesting. It's not there. <laughs> okay, whatever. I'll write it myself. Um, okay, so now we get our description. So we can yeah, just take this, this bit out. Let's take it over to our index page. And instead of the content, we'll get the description. And so up here, we'll use that. And we don't want resolved HTML. We just want the value. And the nice thing about that is it means we can get rid of the dangerously set inner HTML in favor of just using text. So that's good. 
And now if I check that, what we should see on the home page is much better. All right, so now if I click in, we can see all of our stuff. Let's, uh, let's get this updated to work. And so I'm gonna use, what was it? Here's my query. And so if I take this query and I come down here and I drop this in, we're gonna get rid of the wrapping query. And then I wanna change this out to be a slug. We don't, oh, I see what I was doing. I was checking the wrong boxes. So yeah. I shouldn't have been doing this. I instead should have been doing this. Yeah. Oh, all right, cool. That's that's me not knowing how the tools work. Um, <laughs> I didn't so, know this as well, so. <laughs> yeah, uh, we we had uh, other Andre in the, in the channel or in the chat giving us support. So thanks for, Thanks for calling me out. I appreciate that. I am definitely missing stuff here. So, all right, we now have a query that works, I think. And we've got the, the slug set. That slug is coming out of Gatsby node. It gets put into the context here. And so we can get these the slug, the previous, and the next out of the, the context. Um, so here, we'll use that slug to look up our item. And... Yep. That item will now give us a title, post date, description, and content. And we can access that up here by going to, uh, what was it? Kentico Cloud, Cloud Blog, or Item Sorry, Blog. I was all Kentico Cloud. Well, it, in this one, we're doing a, a query for a single item. So it gets, oh, okay. it gets shortened to a, it, okay. a single one. <laughs> and in here, we are going to say, uh, we want, we can bring that back because we've got that again. Um, we can bring this back because we've got it again. And then here we can just uncomment all of this and start swapping out values. So let's get rid of the JSON dump, come back up to the top and start replacing things. So this is going to be, let's do these all one at a time here. Um, so we're going to do post.elements.title.value. The description is going to be post.elements.description.value. And we don't have an excerpt, so I'm going to drop it. We've already got this one. We don't need to touch that. The slug, oh, the date. Um, that's going to be elements.postdate.value. And this will be post elements.content.rendered html. Uh, resolved. 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 HTML. Resolved. Yeah. I was on my way to check that because I was like, that's not right. Um, okay. And then do we have any others? Let's see. Those are right. Wait. Previous dot. Oh, crap. How did we do this? Um, I think previous. it's elements. Uh, old slug here. Yeah, because that's just pulling in the the element. So that's going to be elements dot post slug dot value and mm -hmm. previous elements dot title dot value. And then I'm going to need to copy mm -hmm. this over for this one as well. Okay. Anything else? Let's take a look. Now let's actually, you know what? Let's just let it rip. What happens? Yeah. I screwed something up. Let's find out what it was. GraphQL syntax error. Post slug. Hmm. I'm going to stop and restart because it, we changed the query. So it might just mm -hmm. be that it, it hiccuped on swapping that query in and out. Nope, it definitely does not like that query. Why? Well, let's go to my preferred method of debugging, which is to copy paste it into the graphical explorer. Um, we're going to drop this in here. I'm going to shut this down and then we'll set a slug 
as a, a variable. Um, and that's going to be slug. And we'll call it new beginnings. And let's expected name. What don't you like? Oh, it seems like there is uh, one bracket missing. Oh, sure is. Oh. There is. Once again, uh, both Andres in the chat saving me at the same time. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's fix this and. Oh yeah, now it starts auto formatting and all that good stuff. So we should then see. Now ah, we almost got there. What's missing? Cannot read property value of undefined because it is looking for a title that we are not querying for in Gatsby node. That's why it was asking for it. So we're going to get the title value. One more stop and start. Okay. How about now? All right. So this is great. Um, so this one, that worked. That's awesome. Wait, did that work? That didn't work, did it? No, it didn't work, no. <laughs> okay, so how do we make that work? Uh, for that to work, you need to you need to provide a type resolver. Okay. Um, and the type resolver, or for, in order to do that, um, you need to uh, open the config. The, this, are, this config or the Gatsby config? No, in, in, in the implementation, actually. Uh, this is an SDK, uh, SDK feature. Now, uh, the first thing you actually need to do uh, is to create a model for the blog post because we're working with the blog post uh, uh, content type. Uh, so let's create a file, new file somewhere. I, I usually prefer to do it in the source and models, but uh, you, can, you can create it anywhere. Works for me. Source, or we're already there. Models, and we're going to call this blog, right? Blog, yeah, it can be blog. And is this JavaScript? Yes. Okay. And uh, this is a basic, this is a, just, a, just a standard class. Yeah? So uh, just write in uh, module exports uh, class blog post or blog. And uh, KC. And here we will need the, the uh, delivery SDK yeah? uh, because we will need to get the type from uh, the delivery SDK. So um, you might want to uh, install that as a dependency. Or we can just write their require and we'll, we'll see if that works, uh, if it was installed as a dependency. Uh, maybe, but I, I think if we're going to use it, we should yeah. probably make it a top level dependency. Those, those, those are the two things. I think you might need RxJS as well. Okay. Yeah. Okay, all good. Um, let's. Cool. Let's, uh, so I'm going to do, am I importing this as like KC? Uh, K, yeah, like... I usually write KC uh, in capitals as in Candigo Cloud. But, okay. Uh, and that's a required Candigo Cloud delivery. Yeah. And then the uh, class block extends uh, KC content item, uh, KC dot content item, both capitals. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, and there uh, you need to provide a constructor. And the constructor uh, is actually just calling super. And in the super, uh, you will need to provide an object. Well, so we're not doing it like this, we're doing... Yeah, no, 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 no. Uh, you don't need props, but instead of props, just provide an object there. Okay. Um, and in link resolver. Link resolver? Yes. Okay. Link resolver. Um, and that would be uh, uh, the real function that has two uh, two arguments, uh, which I just like to call them link and context. Autocomplete is going to be our friend today. Is, yes. And what you need to return is uh, basically the URL uh, where you want to redirect the user. Now we're using the uh, the slacks, so just to type in return. Um, you will need to provide the slash forward slash of the link. Um, and then uh, link.url slug. 
So but that's basically the only thing you get. Yeah, um, that's the that's the advantage of the URL slug field. Um, okay. It gives you that in bank automatically. Okay. Otherwise, you would get the the uh, item uh, ID in the context. Okay. So this is this is good. Uh, let's go back to config. Do I so do I not need the context? No, not really. No, in okay. this case, no. Okay. So back in the config. Yeah. Um, I'll do the same. Uh, so we're not making any mistakes. Uh, just give me a second. There we go. Um, and in the um, in there, you will need to uh, create a new type resolver. Let me check. Yeah, and that would be a new kc dot type resolver. So you will need the kc reference here as well. Uh, the require. Yeah. Okay. And this one is going so, to be, uh, yeah. wait, where did it go? Here it is. KC dot. Is. Um, type resolver with uh, capitals again. Yeah, there you go. Okay. And first uh, you need to uh, name the type resolver. So uh, we can call it blog. Uh, or I think this is, this is actually the code name. Uh, it's not just a name. Uh, I think you need the first letter to be lowercase uh, because the code name of the, the content type is yeah is lowercase. Okay. Um, and then you need to provide a function that returns the new instance of the blog post uh, or of the, of the blog um, object. Like that. Um, yeah, I think that that works. Um, doesn't really need to have the, the brackets, but that should be fine. Yeah. Uh, what am I doing? We're gonna do in in source. source. Models yes. blog. Yeah. Okay. And oh, again, I've gone way past it. So you're just you're saying I can just do this. Uh yes. Okay. That should be that should be good. Yeah. So now when you run this, uh, I think we should get the correct link. Okay, let's try it. Right, nothing exploded, so that's good. Um, that's usually good, yeah. <laughs> all righty, and now if I look at this, that is actually linked to the new beginnings. Good deal. Very cool. And this all right. It doesn't work just for links, yeah, but it works for for uh, all the content, on the nested content items and things like that. So, whatever structure you have um, uh, in content in Candigo Cloud, mm -hmm. you can just provide solvers um, for the respective content types, um, and the SDK will do everything for you. So you don't have to worry about uh, resolving those things manually. Okay, cool. And now, is this something that like so? So one thing that we do in uh, in like a Gatsby blog here is when you click through to another post, like if I go to this one um, and I click this, it's using the, the Gatsby link component, which um, is kind of like a, it turns it into an SPA. And if we look at this one, it is doing a full refresh. Is there a way to tell the resolver to use like React components? Is that a possibility? Uh, yeah, not not using the link resolver, uh, but you could provide uh, your own resolver for the rich text uh, where you can just uh, remove that element completely. Because right now it uses a component, yeah, a element. Okay. Um, so you could change that probably with with link element. Yeah, I haven't tried it myself, but uh, I think that should work. Yeah. Okay, so maybe maybe not a maybe not an exercise for today, given given how much time we have, but uh, something that is in theory possible. Yeah, should be possible, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so we, at this point, we have a functioning blog. Uh, we are able to link to and from different things. Um, it's working with, you know, back and forth links, which is which is what we want. Um, what should we do next? Do you want to try to convert this into a theme? Uh, yeah, uh, well, we can, we, can, uh, we can do that, definitely. Um, but there's just one one last bit that I wanted to show you, um, and that is if um, you want to actually put this up on GitHub uh, sure. for everyone to download, when they want to run it uh, for themselves, and they would actually have to go into Candigo Cloud and create everything on their own. Yeah, so exactly those steps that you did, 
uh, to create all the content models and content items and everything, they would have to do it uh -huh. uh, manually. Okay. So there is a way how we can do it uh, uh, in an easier way uh, and provide an export package of everything. Okay. Um, and actually go to, uh, I'm not sure if it's actually indexed yet, but uh, let's, try, let's try Googling for it. That would be interesting as well. Um, type in Kentico Cloud uh, Template Manager. Here? It's not, yeah, there is. Okay, cool. Yeah, so go in. Uh, and this is actually a tool. Oh, uh, for uh, click on the, on the URL in the description. Uh, this is a it's a source code, so you can inspect the source code as well. But what we're looking for is the template manager uh, application. Mm -hmm. um, and what you do here uh, is basically uh, copy items from one project to another, uh, but also copy items and types into an, uh, a zip package. Uh, so if you open menu of this tool, uh, there is a link for uh, export. Okay. Uh, and here you need to provide the project ID. And that was here. Yeah, you can take here. it from the URL. Yeah. All right. And, I think and we... the link also, we're, we're fine. We do need to, uh, oh, we we need to fill this. Default. Okay. Yeah. So just click export. Yeah. So this was fast because you only have two content items. Right. Uh, here you can see the preview. Uh, and if you uh, give someone the implementation of the site and you give them this export package, they're able to uh, spin up the site uh, within minutes. Yeah, So they just need to uh, register and import it. Uh, we can actually try that as well. Um, so they, and they would do that here? Yeah, but you will need to create a new project for this. Okay. Um, yeah, because let's we give it a have shot. all the items in this one. Uh, how do I do this? I go here, my projects, Yeah. <clears throat> create a new project, and we'll call this other Gatsby blog. And we'll make it empty. Okay, mm -hmm. so I've created another project. And once I open this, open it. we can take this. And just uh, copy this, uh, yeah, copy this ID. But you will also need to uh, copy the content management API key because obviously nobody can insert items into your project, only you. Seems reasonable. So if you go to settings. Okay, content yeah, management you API. Activated. Okay. Um, and I'm going to deactivate this in a minute, so don't do anything shady, you yes. you watchers. Um, all right, and then I'm going to drop this in, and then what? I just go. Yeah, just prepare the import. Uh, it will tell you uh, first what it's going to what it's going to do. Okay. Uh, I see the one content type and two content items. One content this type, two content Four. items. Yeah, so you can proceed with the import. Proceed. Oh, no. Oh, something went wrong. The provided request body, validation errors, sure. attribute. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is still a work in progress. So uh, sorry for that. Uh, we're actually creating new versions uh, daily. So uh, unfortunately, uh, this crashed. But uh, usually this works. <laughs> <laughs> works on my machine um, for that. <laughs> oh but wait look it actually did work those those items are there so maybe uh, just publishing uh, failed so what you can do is actually hmm. yep, oh no there. So the items it, were created but it uh, the only got there. okay yeah. <laughs> cool so it got close but not not quite um, but we can see kind of how this is it has potential and, and what this would mean. Um, and, and what would also be kind of interesting is like, I wouldn't necessarily want someone to have to import all of my posts. I could, am I able to like, if I, let's see, if I just go to this export, mm -hmm. can I tell it to only export the schema and not necessarily, or the, the, the content model? Uh, not really, but what you, what you can do is it only takes public data from your project. Yeah. Uh -huh. So what you can do, actually put all the items that you don't want in the package you can put them in the draft workflow step um, and then it will uh, it will export only the types got no you content. okay cool so that that could be a way to to do that because it looks like it choked on the content not on the on the model yeah so if we, the, oh, we the, the only great, had the model yeah yeah the great thing is that uh, when we initially uh, convert this into a theme mm -hmm. um, you can 
your project uh, in place, you can leave the configuration there with your project ID because that API uh, or that project ID is uh, public. So that someone, uh, when they want to consume your template and they want to uh, change it uh, to, to look differently or, or whatever, mm -hmm. then they can start using your content. They don't have to create their own project and create their own content, but they can keep using your content, uh, adjust the implementation, and then uh, maybe uh, return it back to the community uh, committed somewhere or uh, just change the content in their own project. Yeah. Cool. So this, that's a nice, I actually tried it uh, myself here uh, to provide two configurations and it worked very nicely with the theme. So that's a nice way, I think, how to do it. Cool. Yeah. So that, I mean, this is, that's pretty handy. So we'll drop this in the, in the chat so that people can get at it. Um, and then in the meantime, let's see, I should probably clean this up a little bit. Let's delete this. Pro Wait, what am I doing? I want to go back here. here. Well, you can just deactivate the project. Yeah. How do I deactivate? Uh, if you go, uh, if you open the projects drop down uh, and go to my projects. Okay. Uh, for every project, there is an archive option. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So we will knock that one out and then we'll come over yeah. to our Gatsby blog. Um, and all right, so we've got everything kind of published here. Now, if I want to, actually, here's what we should do, because this is something that I think is, is, uh, is worth learning for everyone. I'm gonna go ahead and publish this. Um, so let's do, uh, let's see. This is all, let's, we didn't put anything sensitive in here, right? The, you said the project ID can stay? And then, That's public, yeah. Okay, and then I'm also going to uh, we can get rid of, let's, uh, you know what, I'm, I'll clean this up later so that you don't have to watch me do it. I'm basically, I just need to remove all of the, the remark stuff that we're not using anymore. Um, so I'm going to commit and we will say, uh, initial commit of Kentico cloud blog. Um, I will create a new repo. I'm using the, the GitHub hub tool to make that happen. And then I'm going to git push and we're gonna push master. And then I, I was just on um, with Sean Wang from Netlify and he was showing me how to use the, the Netlify CLI. I still don't entirely remember mm -hmm. how to do it, but I think I can just like init this. So let's init. And I'm going to create a new site. We'll call this Kentico Gats or Kentico Cloud, sorry, Gatsby blog. And we'll put it on my team. Uh, it's going to be yarn build public for Gatsby build artifacts. And I'm going to create a Netlify Toml. And now, if I configure to automatically deploy from GitHub branches and pull request, so if I go to Netlify open, oh man, that tool is so cool. So now we've like, the site's already <laughs> built and running. Um, and we have our site building. And assuming all goes well, this is going to put everything up, give us what we need, and we'll be able to, uh, come on little buddy, it should take us like a minute here. But my hope is, uh, it, here's, let me, while we're waiting for this to build, let me explain what my goal is. When you make changes to a Gatsby site, you have to rebuild it. And that's really easy to do when you've got it set up on Netlify because when code changes happen, Netlify is watching the GitHub branch and will automatically trigger a rebuild. But, how do we do that from Kentico Cloud? Um, whenever we make a change to Kentico Cloud content, how are we going to trigger a rebuild? Yeah, so if something like that happens, uh, you can set up a webhook um, that fires when an item is published. So when a public content changes, um, and then uh, the webhook can do pretty much anything you want. We actually have a, a bunch of sites internally running on Gatsby 
um, and we are using Travis CI to actually receive that webhook. And uh, when a content or code change uh, happens, uh, we just rebuild the site and publish it. Um, I think yeah, we have all, all the sites on GitHub. So um, there's the there's the pipeline basically of the, the whole uh, thing. Okay, and and so the webhook should work for us. Um, I don't know why it's failing right now. So I need to. It it failed on a markdown remark call. Let me do a quick search. Um, how do I find this? Find in files. We're gonna look for markdown, and let's see. We don't need that anymore. Uh, we don't care about the yarn lock. There's no markdown in here. What are you talking about? Where are you even finding markdown, you silly goose? Um, all right. It's, uh, what's the what's the file thing? I'm really bad at this when I don't have my my buttons. Um, I want the explorer. Okay. None of these should be making markdown calls, right? No markdown, no markdown. No. 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 And no. Then this one is also not making any calls. Um, oh, you know what I bet it is? I bet it's the, the feed plugin. Yeah, okay, so um, rather than trying to troubleshoot that right now, I'm just gonna disable the feed plugin. So we will turn this one off. Um, that is a problem worth solving because having a, a feed is a good thing. But um, for now, we'll, we'll just ignore that. So let's go ahead and get commit am fix, uh, disable feed plugin for now. And then once I push, uh, like magic, we will see that they <laughs> have started another one. There it is. Okay. So this is going to start running our build. Um, and then while we're doing that, we can set up a webhook. So let's head over. Well, actually, where do I go to do that? Uh, in the project settings, you can do that. Okay. Oh, and then there are I'm going to create a new one and we'll call this um, yeah. deploy to Netlify. And over here, I guess we can go to settings and I want to figure out a webhook. is what I want, so let's copy that, put this in, and save that. Uh, now, is that it? We're done? Yeah, yeah, you're done. Now you need to publish any content. Cool. Well, let's make sure that our thing is building, and then we'll give that a shot. Yeah. Um, one thing about webhooks is also that uh, when you publish an item, uh, it goes through a pipeline because all the content that is coming from Candigo Cloud, including uh, webhooks and including images and everything, um, is going through the CDNs. Yeah, so all the content is stored on the CDNs and uh, spread out through the world. Uh, okay. So it may take a few seconds uh, to actually see the change or to see the webhook arrive. Yeah. Okay, so let's do this. We are going to, um, let's add a whole new post. I'm going to go back, go to my, my blog, and I'm going to create a new post. And we will call this, let's see, that's going to be posted today. Um, let's generate that. Yeah, that's good. And for this, we will just pull in some random, some random content. 
All right. So I'm going to publish this. And what we should see is that after it publishes, within a relatively short time, we should see a new deploy start. Look at that. All right. So now, without us having to do anything, our, um, our site is now built to update when we change the code and update when we change the content. And this build should be pretty fast because everything should be cached, I think. So let's see. Um, here we go. Building. And rolling. All right. Got a deploy tree. We got all sorts of good stuff going on. Um, someday I'm going to learn what all these different phases mean. But it says here that the site is live. <laughs> so let's reload. There we go. Had to hard refresh it. Um, and there we go. Now we've got this post is live because that's, I mean, that's right. I love that workflow. Like it's, it's so nice to be able to do that. And, uh, <laughs> and having that kind of supported out of the box where we can get all this up and running is really like really, really handy. So with that being said, um, we're probably too short on time to convert this to a theme. But uh, is there anything that you want to cover before we wrap up? Uh, maybe maybe one thing that uh, I forgot to mention is uh, in the template manager. Uh, can you can you actually go there again? This one? Yes. And if you open the menu, uh, there is an item called templates. Yep. Uh, so if you look there, uh, there is also one other template on Gatsby, um, which contains the implementation and also content. So uh, this it's one? not just a this block. Yeah. That's that's exactly the one. Um, it's uh, it's on GitHub, uh, and there is also the import package. So uh, this is actually a ni also a nice looking one. <laughs> oh, nice! Yeah, that looks super cool. Yeah, so we're we will maybe be looking uh, in the future and converting that to a theme. Yeah, uh, we will. Uh, would love to to add more templates. So um, yeah. That's the, that's the last thing. If anybody is uh, is interested in working on this uh, or with us on this, then, then let me know. Yeah, We're always uh, always game for everything. <laughs> cool. Let me send that over. Um, all right. So, Andre, this is great, man. This is uh, this is a lot of fun. We were able to get pretty far in about seventy five minutes. So, where if people want to follow you or get in touch with you, where should they go? The best place is Twitter. Um, so just, just go there. It's underboss um, is my handle. Um, I hopefully have public messages uh, open, so you should be able to message me. You don't. Uh, so I think that's, that's oh, yeah, the best there uh, is. to do that. Yeah. Cool. Yep. So here's the uh, the Twitter. Um, what about Kentico Cloud? If they, like, is the best place to go just to go to kenticocloud.com and Hit this uh, free trial, or or how do you want to? How should people get started? Yeah, that's that's probably the best. That's probably the best place to start. Um, sign up for the free trial. Uh, the free trial can be converted to a free starter plan. Um, so it's not like you have one month uh, to to finish, but uh, uh, there's a starter plan that's always free for for small projects. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, and so this and this looks like it's pretty full featured. Um, so three users. Unlimited projects, uh, limited to five thousand content items, and then two languages. So that's, I mean, that's pretty slick. I like that. Yeah. Dig it. Uh, and of course, if you need any any help with the uh, with the tool? Um, there is uh, there is Intercom uh, on the on the bottom right. So uh, for any questions, the support is right there. Uh, I think the average response time is uh, two to three minutes. So uh, any help that's needed is uh, is there. Awesome. Okay, cool. Well, uh, yeah, that's, I mean, I'm, I'm super excited. Uh, if you are interested in catching more events like these, um, head over to twitch.tv slash Jay Langsdorf, hit that follow button. Um, next week, we're going to do some, uh, some really cool theming stuff with Henry Zhu, who's the, the head maintainer on Babel. A um, couple weeks after that, or I guess the week after that, we're going to get back on with uh, Vlad from Hasura and do some user authentication and role stuff, which is super cool. Um, we're then gonna bring in Brent Jackson, who is one of our core uh, core contributors to the Gatsby Themes project. 
And uh, following that, we're going to have Chris Biscardi on, and we're going to try to turn Gatsby themes into a uh, a UI microservice thing, which I have no idea if that's going to work. It's a crazy idea that we had a while back, and I'm really I'm hoping it works because I'm really excited about it. But you know, we're, that's going to be a, a very fun experimentation section. Um, if there's something that you want to see on this live stream, like please let me know. Tweet at me. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at uh, Jay Langsdorf. And otherwise, Andre, thank you so much. Really appreciate you being on today. And um, we'll, uh, we'll post this up on YouTube soon. And thanks so much for being here. Perfect. Thank you for having me. All right. We'll catch you next time. Bye.